Okay, so we just read about the Columbian Exchange, and now we're ready to do um, our questions and our map activity. We're going to start first with our questions, and we're going to read through them, and we're going to kind of find the answer, but I'm going to leave it up to you to actually write it as a complete sentence down here. Um, and then we'll worry about the colors, or I'm sorry, the, um, the pictures, and then mapping that here in just a minute. But let's start with the questions. So the first question says, why do you think diseases were not spread from the Americas to Europe often? So I want to go back into my reading and I find the section that's all about diseases. Let's start there. So when we talked about these, we definitely talked about how people from Europe and Africa and Asia uh, brought many diseases here to the Americas. For example, smallpox, measles, mumps, whooping cough, influenza, which is a big fancy word for the flu, chickenpox, typhus. Um, all of these diseases were unfortunately brought to the Americas from people from Europe and Africa and Asia. But if we look at the next sentence, it says people who lived in Africa, Europe, and Asia had developed some immunities to these diseases because they had existed in their continents so long, meaning that their bodies had learned how to fight off these diseases because these diseases had been around for a long time. Think of it just as the way, uh, here now in current times, if you get a cold, you know, you might be sick for a little while, but your body has learned how to fight that off because colds are pretty common. So uh, these diseases that they brought with them were pretty common where they lived. So people had these immunities that they had already built up. So it didn't uh, hit them as hard. So when these new diseases that they were introduced to in America came, they already had these immunities built up. So I'm actually going to take my highlight tool. And I'm going to highlight that. So people who lived in Africa and Europe and Asia had developed some immunities to these diseases because they existed in their continent so long. So it doesn't have to be that exact sentence. We actually don't want it to be that exact sentence. But why do you think these diseases didn't spread? Uh, mostly because they already had built up some immunities. It didn't hit them as hard. Whereas the natives hadn't built up any immunities to many diseases at all. Um, so it hit them much harder. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight number one is yellow because that was the color that we found some text evidence for. So I'm going to move to the next color and talk about the next question. So which animal do you think had the largest impact on the Americas and why? So I'm going to go back into my reading and find where it talks about animals. Um, and when we talked about animals, there were lots of different animals that were exchanged uh, back and forth between the Americas and Europe. For example, horses, cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and other useful species. Um, prior to Columbus's arrival, natives and lived high in the Andes had domesticated llamas and alpacas, but no other large mammals uh, during that time. So most of the animals that were benefiting were coming from uh, Europe to the Native Americans. And if I keep looking through here, I'm going to come down here where it talks about the horse was the most attractive animal to the natives. Uh, they first encountered it as a fearsome war beast ridden by the Spanish conquistadors, but then they soon learned to ride and raise their own horses, and the arrival rev of the horse revolutionized Native American life in the North American Great Plains, permitting the tribes to hunt buffalo more effectively. If you remember back when we talked about the Native Americans in the Great Plains, we talked about this, that the horse wasn't native to um, the Americas, to the New World, uh, but when Europeans brought them over, the Native Americans found it completely changed their life and made hunting the buffalo so much easier. So if we go back to our question, which animal do you think had the largest impact and why? I would definitely say the horse had the largest impact and why it's because it made hunting the buffalo and getting from place to place just travel in general so much easier for the Native Americans. Question number three, I'm going to switch my color. Which part of the world do you think benefited from the Colombian benefited more from the Colombian exchange? Well, if we look back at a lot, there's a lot of uh, different things. So there were diseases that hit really hard. So the diseases I feel like um, had it says one of the most dramatic and devastating effects of the Colombian exchange was the introduction of new diseases to the Americas. Then it even talks about in all it thought that 50 to 90 percent of the first Americans died from diseases. So that was not a great thing for the Native Americans. If we look back here in where it talks about crops, um, most of the crops that were grown in the Americas 
were taken back. Let me find where that was. So they talked about rice, cotton, and tobacco form the basis of slavery in the United States, unfortunately. But this was really beneficial for um, people. It wasn't necessarily beneficial for the Native Americans. It was more beneficial to people from Europe because all of these things were being exported. Um, they brought some crops from Europe, like wheat and barley and rye. They learned about some new ones like sugar and bananas and citrus fruit. All of these things are pretty well coming, um, are being grown in the Americas, but they're heading back to Europe. So the crops are better for Europe. Animals, I would feel like, are about the only thing that the Americas benefited more than Europe did. But I think that's really about it. So I would say, which part of the world do you think benefited from the Colombian exchange? I would definitely say that Europe and Asia benefited from the Colombian exchange way more. Because really, Europe got um, new crops. They found new land. They found a way to grow all of these things. They were able to trade and raise animals in this new world. And really, all the Native Americans got, unfortunately, was a bunch of new diseases. They did receive some new animals, like we talked about the horse and some other domesticated animals. They did receive some new crops, but I definitely think that Europe benefited more. And that was because they were able to, like we said, get new land. They were able to grow new crops. They were able to make a profit off of all of these new crops that they were growing. So Europe definitely benefited more. And then my last color... Number four says, how do you think the world would benefit, uh, would be different if, if Columbus had never traveled to the Americas? I want you to think about these last three things. I'm going to have you do this one pretty well on your own. Um, so think about how the world would be different. How would the world be different? Um, how would the Native Americans' lives have been different had the Europeans never come here? Uh, really, they it would be for the better, right? I feel like the Native Americans would have been better off had the Colombian exchange not started. But people in Europe and Asia and really around the rest of the world, it would have been worse. They wouldn't have had all of these new crops. They wouldn't have had all of the money that they started making, unfortunately, from um, the slave trade, really. And it wasn't just slaves from Africa, but it was also slaves from uh, Native American slaves. So it wasn't the best way that they went about it, but they did uh, make a lot of money. They also made money um, on their land, having all these different animals. So it was very beneficial to the Europeans. So had that not ever happened, um, honestly, some of us would have never been here. Because if we came from Europe or Africa, if our ancestors came from those places, then we would have never moved our lives would be very different because we wouldn't live in america today america the united states of america may not have ever been a country um if the Colombian exchange hadn't started because uh they wouldn't be able to live in this country if they couldn't make money off of it uh and people would have probably quit sending explorers had they not found a way to, for it to make it profitable so there's a lot that we just covered I want you to answer that one. So how do you think the world would have been different if Columbus had never traveled to the Americas? There could have been a lot that would have been different. So you can just pick one thing, a sentence good enough here. Uh, okay, now let's talk about the map. So at the bottom of this page, you should have, and also if you need to pause right now to finish uh, writing your sentences for here, I would definitely pause at this point in the video. Make sure you have all of these answered and make sure excuse me, that you have complete sentences. So capital letters, ending marks for two and three. Make sure you don't just tell me which animal, but why. Don't just tell me which side Europe or um, the Americas benefited more. Make sure that you tell me why as well. So I would pause the video right here and finish answering these questions. Okay, now that you've answered all of your questions, Let's talk about our pictures down here and then our map that we're going to move to. So obviously, I'm not going to cut my pieces out on the video, um, but you guys, I expect you to cut them out. But if you want to start, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to color code these pictures a little bit, um, and then that way, when you go to cut them out, you'll know which color matches. So I'm going to do yellow and green. You can choose any colors you want. If you want to do the same colors as me, that's fine, or if you have different colors, that's okay too. But I'm going to say any product that's coming from the Americas to Europe and Africa and Asia, I'm going to do yellow. So I'm going to color this um, 
arrow in yellow as best I can. Okay, so that's how I'm going to color code. Anything that's coming from the Americas to Europe and Africa and Asia is going to be yellow. And then anything that came from Europe, Africa, and Asia to the New World or to the Americas, I'm going to color in green. And again, if you don't have yellow and green, you can use any colors you want. These are just the two colors that I'm going to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to look back at our pictures down here at the bottom. And we're going to find that in the story. And then, I'm sorry, in the text, not really the story. And then we're going to decide, okay, is it coming from the Americas back to Europe and Africa and Asia? Or is it coming from Europe and Africa and Asia to the Americas? So let's just start at the beginning. So corn, uh, we're obviously going to find that in the new crops section. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of skim and scan. So that means I'm not going to read every single word. I'm just going to keep looking through here to see where I can find the word corn. I'm looking, I'm looking, and maybe you even find it before I do. Oh, I see it right here. So let's read the sentence. It says, America had plenty of domesticated plants prior to Columbus, such as corn, potatoes, various beans, pumpkins, and squash. So these were things that were already in the Americas. So that means it's something that's going to, so I color-coded it wrong in our sentence. So I'm going to go back and erase that. So this is something that's coming from the Americas to Europe. So I'm going to color that in yellow. And I also notice that they talk about potatoes and beans and pumpkins and squash. So I'm going to look back at my pictures. So yellow again, because we're going from the Americas to Asia and Europe, I'm going to color in corn as yellow because that one is one that's going from the Americas to Europe and Asia. We did potatoes, uh, pumpkins, squash. That was another one. I think that was it. Let's look back and double check. Yep, corn, potatoes, beans, pumpkins, and squash. So all of those are going to be yellow, which means you'll cut those out and those will go from the Americas to Europe. All right, let's see what we have next. We've got cattle. So let's <clears throat> look back. We're going to look in the animals section this time and look for the word. Oh, I already see it. So it says cattle. The Columbian Exchange brought about animals like horses, cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and other useful species to the Americas. That means now we're coming from Asia, Africa, and Europe, and we're bringing it to the Americas. So that means that we're going to use green now. So let's see, it says cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and other useful species. So I'm going to look for those things. So cattle, um, what else do we say? Sheep, goats, and pigs. Um, there's a pig. Sheep, one's going to be green. I think that's all that we've got on there. Okay, so now we've got some different ones. Um, let's look at the next one. Guinea pig. Let's find guinea pigs down in our animals section. Ooh, guinea pig right here. So let's read this whole sentence. Their main ones, other than llamas and alpacas, were dogs, turkeys, and guinea pigs. So it just says there. I don't know who that is. So I'm going to go back a little bit. Native Americans had plenty of food crops before 1492, but had few domesticated animals. Their main one, so this is coming from the Americas, so I'm going to switch back to yellow. They had llamas and alpacas. They also had dogs, turkeys, and guinea pigs. Guinea pigs, I always find that one interesting. I think that that's funny that they're, uh, they were all used all the way back during the Native American times. Interesting. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's get back on track, Mrs. Card. So guinea pig that's coming from the Americas to Europe, Africa, and Asia. So guinea pigs. They talked about llamas. They talked about a turkey. It doesn't look like they have a dog one on here, so we don't have to worry about that one. Okay, peanuts. So we're going back to crops. Let's look back in crops, and let's see if we can find... Peanuts. So again, skimming and scanning, not looking at every word, not reading every word, just kind of going back and forth until I see the words. 
Oh, I see a lot of things right through there. Oh, found it right here. Okay. Peanuts and cassava, a tropical shrub native to Brazil, were vital to West Africa. Okay, so it doesn't give me enough information. I got to go back farther. It says lesser crops were sweet potatoes, papaya, pineapple, tomato, avocado, guava, chili peppers, and cacao. Some lesser New World crops also had important effects. Peanuts. Okay, so this means... It was coming from the New World, so that means it was coming from the Americas and heading over to Europe and Africa and Asia. So let's highlight that. So peanuts, and it said cassava, if that one comes up. It also said that these things were all coming from the Americas. So things like sweet potatoes, papaya, pineapple, tomato, avocado, guava, chili peppers, and cacao. All right, let's look back here and see. So peanuts, that's yellow because it's coming from the Americas to Europe. Tomatoes was another one. Uh, pepper. Lemon we didn't have yet. Orange we didn't have yet. Banana we didn't have yet. I think those were it. Okay, so let's look back. What do we have left to highlight? Lemons and oranges and bananas. So those are the fruits that I have left. So let's look for fruits in here, the bananas. I see banana right here. And citrus fruits, citrus fruits actually, um, that would be, so citrus fruits are things that are like lemons, limes, and oranges. So those fruits that you think of that are kind of tart or sour. So that would be considered right here. So let's read through here. Even though I have blue, that was for another one. Let's look back. Um, some of these crops included familiar grains. That doesn't tell us where it's coming from. We got to go farther back. The introduction of new crops and domesticated animals upset the Americas almost as much as disease. Columbus hoped to establish fields of plenty in the Americas, so he brought many crops from Europe. So these are all things that came from Europe. So things like wheat, barley, and rye came from Europe. Sugar, bananas, and citrus fruits came from Europe. So we're going to flip-flop because we're looking at things that came from Europe, Africa, and Asia to the Americas. So we need green. And lemons and oranges would be a part of that. Okay. And I think that was it. Wheat, barley, and rye. That wasn't on there, was it? Let's keep reading because I feel like there are some other things in here. We've got bananas that we still need to find. Or did I already say that? Bananas. Yep, bananas. So we need to do that one too. That one's going to be green. So we've got sugar, diseases, horses, and tobacco. Let's look for sugar somewhere in here. Oh. We said that one too, right? So that one needs to be green. All right. Uh, diseases is the next one. And I think we know the answer to this one. So unfortunately, diseases were mostly coming from Europe, Africa, and Asia over to the Americas. That one we don't even have to read about because we, we've read about it a couple of times. So that one's going to be green. Horses and tobacco. I'm hoping that you could tell me where horses came from because we just talked about it in one of the questions. But if I look back here, we have it down here. Natives soon learned to ride horses, right? The horse came from Europe to the Americas. So that one's going to be green. So tobacco is the last thing that we have left. So let's look in our crops and let's find tobacco right here. So it also became the foundation for some of the largest slave societies known. Rice, cotton, tobacco form the basis of slavery in the United States. Tobacco originated in the Americas and was taken to Europe. So this one is one that's going to start here in the Americas and head over this way. So it's going to be yellow. Let me switch to yellow. So we've got all of these highlighted. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your paper. You're going to cut these pieces out. When you cut them out, please be careful and make sure that you're really cutting on the dotted lines. Also, please make sure that you're cutting these out over your desk so that way these uh, don't get lost. Okay. And you're going to go down to your map and all of my yellow highlighted things. So like corn, guinea pigs, llamas, those are just going to be glued above this arrow. So they're going to match up with the arrow going from the Americas over to Europe. Anything that we highlighted green, those are things that were coming from Europe, Africa, and Asia. And those are going to go below the green arrow on the map. So you're going to glue those down. So when you're finished, you should have your questions that you're ready to turn in with your name on the top, and then you should also have your name on the top of the map to turn in. Um, if you need to rewatch this video, you can rewatch this video, or if you need to pause this video at any time, you can go back and pause.
where things are, um, then uh, make sure that you have all of your questions answered, that you have all of the uh, pictures glued down. And if you need to, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten on the top. And there are two rows of it, so that means you should have 20 pictures on your map. So you can double check and count your map to make sure you've got all 20 on there. Um, and I think that's it. So if you need to go back in this video and review, if you need to go back and listen to the story again for any of these parts, um, you can. If not, other than that, I think you guys are good. But review the video at any time if you need to do so. You can also send me a message on Canvas if you have any questions. All right, guys, good luck.